Your Royal Highness, welcome back to Ontario. It's wonderful to have you with us. Uh, Dr. Diamond and uh, Huda Trevoranis, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon and welcome to the Vice Regal Suite. It's a pleasure to have you all here for this momentous occasion. When the uh, reimagining accessibility competition began in September, it was to help raise awareness that the international symbol of access, or as we will all come to know it as the wheelchair symbol, had actually become, over time since its introduction in 1968, less and less inclusive. In fact, less than 3% of all people with disabilities actually use a wheelchair, or in my case, a scooter. So the traditional blue and white wheelchair sign is actually an irrelevant image when it comes to the blind or those with hearing issues or cognitive issues, to mention just a few. In other words, the 97% of disabled people who do not use wheelchairs. Our goal, therefore, was to develop a new accessibility icon to potentially replace the current international symbol of access. Well, we certainly succeeded in raising awareness if media coverage is to be any measure. There is a great deal of public debate and discussion online, in the mainstream universe, and certainly in the Twitterverse, engaging people with and without disabilities. And while the contest was only open to colleges and universities, we were also thrilled to receive a submission from Dave Passion's grade eight class at Ancaster Senior Elementary School. And they are here with us right now. Uh, would you like to stand, please, all of you? Thank you. We're gonna be putting some of their um, examples up in the monitors here. And as you can see uh, from the examples that they came up with, uh, they worked very hard and thoughtfully on the signs. And so we applaud Mr. Passion and all of the students uh, for this. There really are some in intriguing ideas and I know they're going to be examined further. But now let's turn to the competition itself. More than 100 entries were submitted from Canada and really around the world from Argentina, from China, Finland, France, India, Indonesia, Iraq, Italy, Mexico, and the UK. The designs were then analyzed by an expert international panel of judges. These included people who were design experts, people with a variety of disabilities, as well as a number of accessibility advocates. And so we began to meet on Monday. And something both surprising and interesting happened. What began as a double-blind judging exercise quickly became a learning experience for everyone involved, myself included. We quickly realized that what we had asked of the students was extremely difficult and far more complex than we had first thought. We had asked for a new symbol that in the blink of an eye would communicate a complex, multifaceted, and nuanced message about accessibility. We wanted something that captured the practical aspects of accessibility and the spirit of accessibility. We wanted something that would work in every context, for every goal, and for every person in whatever language there is in the world. And while it was very obvious to us all that the students had tried diligently to achieve the foregoing, in the end, it was the judge's view that the competition simply had not met its mandate. So in one sense, and in one sense only, there is no specific winner but the judges have selected two brilliant designs, which as promising concepts have inspired us all. The judges have selected two highly merited honorable mentions, selections with a promise, so much promise that they both have a future, I believe. As you will hear from Dr. Diamond in a few moments, the Inclusive Design Research Center at OCAD University has agreed to work with the designers of these two submissions going forward. Their goal will be to arrive at a more inclusive symbol that represents accessibility. The learning process will continue through OCAD U's ongoing commitment to meeting the mandate of the competition with the support of the Lieutenant Governor's Office. In May 2014, OCAD U will be holding a design workshop at the International Design Enabling Economic Policies Conference where the idea of this competition first took flight last summer. The reworked designs will be featured at the workshop for the delegates' input. In addition, ISO, the ultimate body that determines the 
symbol that is used around the world, has asked Professor Trevor Ennis to host a consultation on the symbol redesign, and sessions will be held during the DEEP event with ISO representation next May. And I'm also very pleased to announce that when the designers and OCAD had fully developed their submissions, that they will then be officially presented at next summer's International Summit on Accessibility 2014 in Ottawa at Carleton University on June 12th. So to our designers, your work has just begun. Perhaps the final lesson we have taken away from the competition is that the difficulty of this mandate is a testament to the evolution of our understanding about accessibility itself. It demonstrates that our sense of accessibility is becoming complex, responsive, multifaceted, and as diverse as the individuals whom accessibility should serve. This is something to be celebrated. So I commend everyone who entered the competition, despite the complexities of the challenge and the very short time frame for entry, your contributions to the contest were thoughtful, innovative, and creative. Well done to all of you. I applaud Dr. Diamond, Professor Trevor Annis, and your amazing team at OCAD-U for your commitment to accessible design and to the ongoing collaborative effort. I have no doubt you are as, as pleased as I am that one of the designs to achieve honorable mention was actually submitted by an international team of students who go to OCAD-U. I thank the judging panel for your invaluable input to the process and for opening our eyes to the complexity of the challenge. Last but no, no means least, I'm sincerely, sincerely grateful to you, Your Royal Highness, for taking time from your busy schedule to join us today. Your interest in this competition has meant a great deal to us. And as the representative of Her Majesty the Queen, and on behalf of the people of Ontario, I thank you all for being here today. Thank you, Your Honour. And now it is my pleasure to invite the President of OCAD University, Dr. Sarah Diamond, to come forward and offer remarks. Dr. Diamond. Your Royal Highness, Your Honour. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Sarah Diamond, President and Vice Chancellor of OCAD University, Canada's University of the Imagination. What a privilege it has been to partner with the Office of the Lieutenant Governor on this design competition. I want to add my thanks to yours, your honor, to all of those who worked so very hard, both to come up with creative design submissions, but also took on the work of organizing such an internationally reaching competition. Together, we have initiated a process that raised awareness amongst the broader public and those who participated in the competition itself. I too want to thank our world-class jurors who dedicated their time to this project. Imagining reaccessibility like OCAD University itself asked the students to transform their imagination into invention. In our art, design, and new media education, we teach that it's important to examine our creative outputs and constantly review our process so we can achieve greater expression of our ideas. For the designers chosen by our jury as honorable mentions in the competition, we are very happy to provide mentoring through our Inclusive Design Research Center. The IDRC's work is very important. Everyone, regardless of age or mobility issues or any other life condition, needs to be able to use online technology. Now, and even more so in the future, this is how we connect, do business, and access services. Such a vital, vital service must be accessible for all, and that's what we mean by inclusive design. The center is a leader in our university's research and advocacy for inclusivity, diversity, and accessibility for all, and it shines out to the international community. We hope these design concepts will grow and reach their fullest potential. Thank you again, Your Honor, for this amazing opportunity and for inspiring all of us to reimagine accessibility. Thank you.
Thank you, Dr. Diamond. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time to announce the recipients of honorable mention from this competition. Your Honor, Your Royal Highness, Dr. Diamond, our first submission, as can be seen on the screen, is a group consisting of Arief Yulianto, Tagrid Al Zubaydi, Yiying Jiang, and Julie Bulo. Your Honor, Your Royal Highness, Dr. Diamond, our second submission, as can be seen on the screen, is Dalton Hadwin. Your Honor, Your Royal Highness, Dr. Diamond, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a warm round of applause for today's recipients.